Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, I reviewed a similar product to this around four years ago, but this product is called a Chiyoda V9. Now, it's a programmable 10 watt FM portable repeater. Now, I received the standard kit, which includes the V9 repeater itself, a programming cable so that you can change the stored frequencies a user manual, which you can obviously browse through to get yourself familiar with it, a vehicle power adapter, so you can use it portable, and lastly, a mains adapter, so you can use this either at home or another location where mains power is available. Now, there are other optional extras available, which I'll cover briefly shortly, but the Chai Erda V9 does support frequencies between 136 to 174 megahertz, and then 400 to 470 megahertz, However, change in frequency is not just as simple as programming the memories. As well as programming the memories, you will need to also retune the internal duplexer. Now we'll take a look at this and explain in more detail shortly. Now the whole product is mounted in a very sturdy waterproof casing. Now on the left side of the repeater, we find two ports, a DB9 style connector, which can be used with an optional speaker microphone. And there's also a four pin CB microphone style connector. However, this four pin socket is used for either the programming cable or the power supply, which powers the V9 when in use. On the right hand side, we find an SO239 socket, which is where you connect your antenna. Now, personally, I would have liked to see an N type here because I'll be using it on the 70 centimeter handband, but it is what it is. A leather style carry handle is also fitted, making it nice and easy to carry when transporting or moving to different locations. Now, before we power it up, let's take a look inside with the four spring loaded bolts hold on the top cover. So just carefully unscrew them. And then when you remove that top cover, just be careful because there is a cable which goes to the front panel that connects to the LCD. Now, luckily that cable is actually long enough to open the top fully and expose the main board and the duplexer, i.e. the guts of this repeater. Now we can see the main board there on the left and it's covered by that aluminium plate, probably providing some kind of RF screening. And on the right, we see the duplexer. Now if you don't know what a duplexer is, let me briefly explain. Now this repeater has a single antenna connection and that comes in and connects directly to the duplexer. The transmit and receive side of that main board also connects to the duplexer via their own connections. Now what the duplexer does, it allows transmit and receive using the same antenna at the same time. Now the split between the TX and the RX on this is around eight megahertz, which is actually quite wide. However, to stop the receiver being affected by the transmitted signal, the duplexer filters this out. Essentially, it's like a very fine tuned filter. Now these duplexers are adjustable but you do need specialist equipment to tune them. However, I have seen others tune duplexes just using cheap VNAs. I guess they'll get you in the ballpark area if you needed to use one. Now this is something which you'll need to specify when you order the V9. Otherwise you'll need to either tune it yourself when you get it or get a professional to do so. Let's have a look at the front LCD and see what the buttons do. But first I'll need to apply some power. So using the vehicle adapter that came with the V9 repeater, we plug one end into the four pin port and then the other end I'll plug into my anchor power bank. Now with this kind of setup, it's easy to see how portable this radio repeater can be. Now at the moment, I don't want to connect an antenna. So I just connected a dummy load onto the output side just so that we don't damage it in case it transmits. Although it shouldn't transmit unless it receives a signal on its input frequency. Pressing the up and down buttons show a change in volume, but there is no internal speaker on the V9. However, an optional extra is a speaker mic, which plugs into that DB9 socket we saw earlier. This then adjusts the volume coming from that speaker mic. Now, if we just sidestep for a moment to look at the wiring diagram for the nine pin connector, we can see what each of those pins do. Now, having a busy signal on pin three makes this also quite suitable for adding other interfaces, something like an echo link node or even an all star node. Now, if we press and hold one of the up or down buttons, this changes the memory selection and the V9 can store up to 16 different channels, which is set by software. 
So let's take a look at the programming software to see how we change these memories. The programming cable plugs into the same port as where the power supply fits, but when using the programming cable, the V9 is powered from your computer. As a result of this, you'll notice the LCD is blank and only back illuminated. Now, if we pop over to the computer and look at the device management, we should be able to see the virtual COM port, which has been assigned to that programming cable. Within the programming software, we first need to set the COM port, the same as what we saw in Device Manager. Then we click the Read button to read back the memory contents of the V9 repeater to the computer software. As we can see here, this repeater has already been programmed according to the filter tuning of that internal duplexer. Now, in order to test this repeater, I'll need to program two other radios with the same CTCSS tone and frequencies. The TX and RX in the other radios will literally be reversed as to what the V9 is programmed. So the handheld will transmit on the V9's receive frequency and then it will receive on the V9's transmit frequency. This is uh, M0 DQW transmitting on 438.45, 438.45 M0 DQW, checking the Chiyoda V9 repeater, checking the Chiyoda V9 repeater, which should be retransmitting on 430.825 into a dummy load. This is uh, M0 DQW, test, test. Now hooking up the V9 to a power meter, we can see an output power of around 6.5 watts. Now combine that with a high gain antenna for the used band, and that should provide a good coverage if installed high enough. Now I tested the power output using the mains adapter which came with the V9, as well as using the anchor power bank, Now both gave exactly the same power output. Now testing the V9 using my spectrum analyzer also painted a clearer picture of the quality of transmission. Here we can see two peaks. The peak on the left is the output from the repeater and the peak just slightly lower to the right is a transmission coming from my handheld transceiver which is transmitting on the repeater's input frequency. The range on the analyzer is from 400 megahertz up to one gigahertz. And as far as I can see here, there does not appear to be any nasty harmonics where they shouldn't be. Now I would have loved to be able to test this repeater in the real world setting it up in a temporary location on a high point and then get a couple of mates to see how far away we can work through the repeater. However, due to current license laws in the UK, we would have had to apply for what is called an NOV and the repeater would have had to be vetted, call sign assigned and then licensed. Now this takes some time to do. Now if you're interested in seeing a video like this, then let me know down in the comments below. And if there's enough of you interested in seeing this working like a repeater should, then I'll apply for an NOV, but as said, it could take some time. If you use one of these as a permanent repeater or even as a portable repeater, then let me know down in the comments below. It'd be interesting to see how you guys get along with it. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.